in the spiritual realms, Father God, in the heavenly realms on this morning, Father God. Let us not just dwell here, Father God, but Lord, I pray that you would take us into the third heaven, even in our worship, Father God. Let our worship, Father God, be found worthy in your presence, God. Let it be lifted up as a sweet aroma, Father God, to your nostrils, God. I pray that when you smell the fragrance of our worship, Father God, that you would come down, God, and open up doors that no man can open. Create opportunities that no man can create, Father God, that you may get the glory out of our lives, God. We bless you. We love you. We submit and surrender to your will. We, we submit and surrender to your word. And we submit and surrender to your way. For you are the only true and living God who stands alone, apart from all others, God. You are the true and living. And for that, we worship you. For that, we worship you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We exalt you, God. Your word says to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, oh God. So we thank you, oh God, for what you're doing, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for life. We thank you for strength, oh God. We thank you that the breath in our lungs, oh God, it comes from you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for doing a new thing in this place, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We honor you, oh God. We glorify your holy name, oh God. We join with the angels today and the 24 elders, oh God. And we cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Holy 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 are you God holy 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 is the Lord hallelujah God may the sound of heaven saturate this place today oh God it's not in our own strength oh God it's not in our own might oh God but we acknowledge that we need you oh God we acknowledge that we can do nothing without you oh God so we thank you oh God we glorify you oh God we magnify you oh God we exalt you oh God you are awesome oh God in this place oh you, oh God, we invite you into this place, oh God. We say, Holy Spirit, come, oh God. Holy Spirit, come, oh God. Holy Spirit, oh come, oh God. Saturate this atmosphere in the name of Jesus, oh God. Saturate this atmosphere in the name of Jesus, oh God. Your word says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty, oh God. So we speak freedom in this place, oh God. We are free to worship, oh God. We are free to cry out to you, oh God. And we glorify you for that, oh God. We glorify you for that, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for healing in this place, oh God. I speak healing in this place, oh God. I speak healing in this place, oh God. And not only in this place, oh God, but through the airways, oh God. We speak healing, oh God. Through the airways, oh God. We speak hope, oh God. Through the airways, oh God. We speak deliverance, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We cannot come into your presence and leave the same, oh God. But we declare that we'll be renewed and refreshed, oh God, and restored in the name of Jesus, oh God. May the weight of your glory, may the weight of your glory rest in this place, oh God. May the weight of your glory rest in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. You say in Isaiah, oh God, that you will not break a bruised reed and you will not put out a smoldering um, frame, oh God. So we thank you, oh God. You are setting on fire, oh God. You're setting us on fire today, oh God. You're setting us on fire today, oh God. May we be on fire for you, oh God. May we be on fire for you, oh God. Even those, oh God, who felt like they were losing their fire, oh God. I free. I not declare a new fire, oh God. A new fire, oh God. A fire from above, oh God. Set us on fire, oh God. May your fire enclose this place, oh God. go deeper and higher in you, oh Lord. May we go deeper and higher in you, oh God. And we thank you, oh Lord, for what you're doing, oh God. We exalt you, oh God, and we magnify you, oh God. And we say there is none like you, oh God. May our praise be an aroma to you, oh God. May our praise be an aroma to you, oh God. May our praise be an aroma to you, oh God. May you be pleased, oh God. May you be pleased and may you rest here, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you, we
this morning need his love.
little bit. Yesterday I was praying. And I said, God, the word of God says that the earth is waiting on the sons and daughters. The sons and daughters. The earth is waiting on the sons and daughters. Right? What shall I tell you? to the Lord. Tatiana, the Holy Spirit said back to me, the body of Christ is waiting on the sons and daughters. He's waiting, he's waiting, yeah. The Lord is giving us time. But that time is soon to be cut short. Listen, 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 hold on. We don't have time to play with our prayer. We don't have time to play with our life. People of God, do you hear me? The ones online, do you hear me? Hear the prophet of the Lord say! This is not me talking. But hold on, because the body of Christ needs to hear this. The word of God says that the earth is waiting on the sons and daughters to you today the Holy Spirit said that the body of Christ is waiting on you it's 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 waiting on you you. stuff y'all it's time out for that it's a war going on in the natural so if it's going on in the natural that means it's taking place in the spirit you gotta come up i'm talking to myself as well It's one accord. 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 It's one acc
if you believe your God to be great, you need to make some noise in this room. I said, if you believe God to be great, you need to shout in this room. I thunder it down in this room. If you believe God to be great, if you believe God to be great, I didn't say if you believe him to be good, if you believe him to be great, you ought to lift your voice in this room. Offer God the fruit of your lips in this room. Let God know how grateful you are of how great he is. Let God know. Let God know. to give in this room. I believe that the Spirit is moving. Let's prepare our hearts to give unto the Lord. If you need an envelope, just raise your hands. We'll get one to you. If you want to give on your smart device, your phone, tablets, you can go to www.contagious.church. We are one church with two locations. If you find a shorter location, hit the give button. It's very simple. You can also do paypal.me backslash contagious charlotte. You can go to your app store, download our contagious church app. Just open up your Apple store, you wherever you buy your apps, type in contagious church and the app will pull up. Find the Charlotte location on there, hit the give button, it's really simple. You can also text to give. If you open up your phone in the message box, put give CLT to number 813-308-0638. Give CLT to 813-308-0638. Last but not least, you can give on our cash app. Money sign contagious CLT. Money sign contagious CLT. Listen, as you're giving on this morning, I want you to be encouraged and know that we are truly grateful for every seed that you've sown and every seed that you will continue to sow into this ministry. We thank you for your consistency. We thank you for your devotion. We even thank you for your commitment because you don't have to do it. But you giving is a sure sign that this is good ground and you believe it to be good ground where you can plant your seeds and know that it will produce a great harvest. One more time, www.contagious.church for those of you online. www.contagious.church. We are one church with two locations, Tampa and Charlotte. Find a Charlotte location, hit the give button. PayPal.me backslash Contagious Charlotte. Go to your app store, download our Contagious Church app. Just find a Charlotte location and hit give. You can text to give. Give COT in the message box to 813 813- 308-0638. That is give COT to 813-308-0638. Last but not least, you can give on Cash App. Money sign, Contagious CLT. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you for another time to give, God. We thank you for another moment of worship, Father God, not just the singing, Father God, and shouting, God, but even the giving, God, for we believe that this is a form of worship, Father. So we pray that you would be pleased, Father God, not just with the greatest seed, but even with the smallest seed, Father, not just with the abundance, God, but even with the back, Father God. Lord, may you use it for the edification of your kingdom, even now in the name of Jesus, God. I pray that you would extend his reach, Father God, extend his influence, Father God, let it touch the hearts of 
people, Father God, who truly have a heart for you, God. I pray that you would open up regions and territories and, and areas and cities and states and countries and continents and, and nations, Father God, where your gospel can be disseminated, Father, into all the world, Father. I believe, God, that we have sown into good ground on today, Father God. And where there is good ground, Father God, it won't be choked up. It won't fall by the wayside. The fowls of the air won't scratch it up, God. But I thank you, God, that it will produce a great harvest, God. So we look forward to the great harvest, God. We look forward to what you're going to do on the behalf of Contagious Church Charlotte and on the behalf of your people, Father. Lord, let them see supernatural blessings, supernatural increase, increase supernatural overflow, even now. In the name of Jesus, God, that you may get the glory out of all. God, we bless you even now as we prepare our hearts, God, for the word, Lord. I pray that you would ready us, Father, for a word from on heaven, Father God. Let us taste of the fresh manna, God, that will be delivered, Father God, even through the voice box of your apostle Reggie, God. I pray that you would stir up every gift on the inside of him, Father God. Ignite a fire deep down in his belly, God. Let him preach, pray, and prophesy with boldness, with courage, with confidence, Father God, and with assurance, God. And let it touch the hearts of your people in this room, God, that we will never leave this place the same. God, when we will leave change, God, transform, rene renewed and refined, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We thank you for another moment to hear from you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And I want to say amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will boast in the Lord. I will lift him up and be glad therein. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I dare you to begin to praise your God. I dare you to begin to shabak your king. Come on. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. He is the lily of the valley. He is the oh, Shabbat. Glory to God. I release the best of who God has for you. Hallelujah. Let your people walk in your best. Let them, hallelujah, let them people believe for the best. In the name of Jesus, God, let them preach. Let them declare. And let them decree your word concerning them. If you believe that, I dare you to begin to praise your God. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy over you that you will be in the season that you're going to tell God, hallelujah, and you're going to testify that, listen, I received God's best. Why? Because I decided to obey him. It will be counted unto you as righteousness. Glory to God. Because you believe God, just as it was in the days of Abraham. Thank God that he's not a respecter of person, that he did it for his man of God. So she had, hallelujah, will he not do it for you and I? the best God. Oh, glory to God, the best fruit, the best blessing, the best flavor, the best favor. Uh, Lord, everything, God, concerning you, we will walk in your best. Why? Because, Lord, you said, hallelujah, that you would never leave us. Father, you said you would never forsake us. You said if ye who are evil knows how to give good gifts. Hallelujah. I speak and declare your best over your people now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh, I feel all right. Welcome to Contagious Church, Charlotte, the place where our love, where our faith, and where our worship will forever and always remain contagious. Oh, I feel him in here. I feel him in here. Amen. Before I get into my preach word, y'all already know how it goes down. Hallelujah. Listen, let me uh, first and foremost celebrate my ride or die, my bay, my boo, my sweet thing. Help me celebrate prophetess. Hallelujah. The finest co-pastor on this side of heaven. Amen. She want to go over there and run. And, uh, yeah, 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 5K, her first 5K. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, uh, 
somebody asked uh, on Facebook, how does my wife still look like she's 23 year old, three years old? And uh, I just gently responded and said, it's because I chase her around the house regularly. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you all so much, uh, family and friends, those who are watching by Internet. Um, I have a word from the Lord, and I believe that God wants to release his best concerning you. But in order for to, to uh, listen, we've been preaching and ministering all month long from this thought of, of the best. And I opened up um, uh, preaching and talking about it's after God, uh, after tremendous amounts of warfare, that God has the tendency to release his best concerning his, his people. And, and so I want to encourage somebody, if you've been fighting, if you've been warring, uh, just know that God's best is coming. Just know that, listen, hallelujah, God is not a respecter of person. He said that uh, he's going to give you his best. In fact, warfare uh, is a prerequisite sometimes in many instances to receive God's best. It was at the tremendous times that they were fighting and they were battling uh, and they were uh, the enemy was coming and coming against them at all sides. And you got to know that, listen, when God says that he's going to release his best, uh, your enemies cannot stop you. When you understand that God is going to release his best, you got to know that, listen, the enemy can make all kind of empty threats and idols. And uh, listen, you can tell me to bow down. I'm not going to bow down. Let it be known this day, O king. Hallelujah. My wife ministered on the thought process of, you know, you know, when you, uh, you know, and, you know, there is a connection. And I'm paraphrasing. She's going to probably get me. I ain't going to look over there. Uh, uh, you, you know, in order to receive your best, you know, you got to obey God. That's non-negotiable. Right. Obedience releases your best. So your best comes after tremendous uh, amounts of warfare, uh, understanding that obeying God's instructions releases our best and then you know uh you know Pastor Jermaine got up and taught and he was you know teaching and how you know what you know what's the best is this the best decision see I was paying e I paying attention EP what's the best decision for your life you know what I want you to always and constantly evaluate what you're doing, your modus operandi is what we use in the criminal justice system, meaning your, 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 your motivation, your, your methods of why you do what you're doing. Is this the, listen, is this the best decision for my life? Oftentimes we do things, uh, you know, impulsively and we don't seek the face of God. Remember uh, David, he was really, really good about seeking God's face. And I want to encourage you, like if you are one of those people who are impulsive and you don't seek the face of God regularly, uh, it's never too late to start. Let me help you. David said, shall I go up before the Philistines? You got to know that, listen, uh, in order, it, listen, it, God wants to be so involved with, with every facet of your life. Lord, what should I eat for dinner today? I'm talking about, listen, just that deep. But the church doesn't oftentimes teach us that walking in covenant close relationship with God. He already knows what you like. He already knows what you need even before you ask him if it's what the word of God says. But you got to know and understand. Listen, not enough Christians challenge themselves to say, is this the best decision for my life? And so I want to transition your thought just a bit. Uh, glory to God. But it all ties in. Romans chapter number seven is what I'm going to be reading from. Romans chapter number seven. And let's go down to verse number 21 to 25. Romans 7, 21 through 25. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. It reads a little bit better. I have discovered this principle of life that when I would do good, do what is, let me go back. I have discovered this, the principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? In the new, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, King James translation, I love how King James read. Uh, Paul says, oh, wretched man 
that I am. Uh, verse number 25. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. Mm. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. And I just want to use for a thought this morning. It's, it's important to know um, that in, if we're going to uh, uh, come into God's best of who God is, we must acknowledge that we are sinners. We must acknowledge our wrongdoing. We must acknowledge that we cannot live our lives outside of Jesus the Christ. Uh, it is it's, it, glory to God. Is it in an era that people, many people believe that first and foremost, that God doesn't exist. Then let me go on de debunk that myth because the word declares uh, only a fool saith in their hearts that there is no God. Uh, listen, and I, I love this, and I, uh, uh, you know, you guys can use this anytime. Listen, I ain't going to charge, I promise. Uh, uh, if you're ever ministering to an atheist, I want you to say this to them. In order to acknowledge that God does not exist, you must first acknowledge that he does. It is not possible to deny nothing. I, I guarantee you they're going to be leaving, scratching their heads. Like, oh, God, that brother got a point. Uh, okay, but let God be glorified in all that you're doing. You got to know, in this text, Paul is saying, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this sin? Who will deliver me from this death? Glory to God, right? And, and, and well, you know, let me, let me open up to tell you this. In chapters number seven, the, the text opens up comparing old relationships to sin with new relationships to God illustrated by marriage. Chapter seven, verse one says, now dear brothers and sisters, who you who are familiar with the law don't know that the law applies only when a person is living. Any law in the natural only has power over you as long as you're living. Uh, it, is t it is technically and practically impossible to charge anybody with any crime if they're dead. Glory to God. Every law that is in the, in the natural was designed to hold uh, people who do wrong accountable. But it's impossible to sentence a dead person. Glory to God. So then why in the body of Christ, if we've died to Christ and we have resurrection power with him and we've re we, we've resurrected and live in newness of who Christ is. Why then are we we glory to God? You cannot charge. I just told you you cannot charge a dead person. Listen, if you're dead to sin. Hallelujah. Why then? Why won't we just give God his due glory? Why then? Why can't we live in accordance to what God's best is concerning us? It's because. Glory to God. Here he says, the law only applies as long as they're living. And I love the fact that he used an example in verse number two. For example, when a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he is alive. You know, my wife and I, we have this, this thing in our house. I said, Lord, you know, I, I say this all the time, y'all, and I'm so serious. Y'all, y'all hear me. I say, Lord, you know, I said, I cannot believe I, can, I just have a hard time believing that you've uh, first and foremost allowed me to uh, spend almost 17 years with this beautiful specimen. And in your Bible, you know, uh, like I can challenge God, but uh, in your Bible, you says that in heaven there is there is no marriage. We will be as one uh, almost we will be as one of the angels. And I had a hard time with that thing. And I went many arounds with God back and forth saying, Lord, I just can't accept that. But but according to the scriptures and according to test to the text, uh, you know, that obligation of marriage is only valuable. It's only uh, valid as long as we are living. And so while I've been going back and forth with God. Um, I also understand that God's word cannot change. I understand that God's word, come on, he cannot, he would never go against or operate contrary to his word. Y'all, let me tell you what I told God. 
I said, Lord, uh, can you just break the rules for me? You know, just this one time, God, you know, I just I just need to be with her. OK, Lord. OK, if I can't live and you said in my father's house, there are many mansions. Right. And you said you go to you go to prepare a place for me. You know, Lord, I, I mean, I just Lord, can we just live in the same house? Glory to God. I, I just have a hard time. But according to God's laws, it is only applicable as long as we live. But here, I want, to, I want you to, I want to teach you something. Here uh, in the text, Paul, I love the book of Romans. Here in the text, Paul is teaching them, the Jews. He is teaching the people. Uh, let, let me go down to verse for number four. He says, so my dear brothers and sisters, to this point, you die to the power of the law when you die with Christ. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. When we understand that we are dead to sin, then we can walk and move and experience God's best. Here in this text, glory to God, uh, uh, he was comparing, he, this text opens up comparing the old way of living, which was uh, the old relationship to sin and the new relationship illustrated by God through marriage. We are reigning with Christ. If we suffer with him, we shall reign with him, right? And so you got to know that, listen, if, how, do, how in the world do I walk in the fullness of God's best? Can we walk in God's best living in our sinful nature? Shall, Paul said it like this, shall I continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Let me go back for example when a woman marries the law binds her to the husband as long as he is alive but if he dies the law of marriage no longer applies to her so while her husband is alive she would be committing adultery if she married another man but if her husband dies she is free from that law and does not commit adultery when she remarries so again i want you to understand what paul the message that paul is trying to convey here uh, the old life will keep you bound up in sin the old man uh, the bible says uh, if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things have passed away behold all things have become new uh, listen i question folk who say that they are new creatures in christ and yet they are continuously operating uh, against the laws of god you will never live in God's best. You will never experience God's best uh, fulfilling the lust of your flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Because the word of God declares that no good thing dwells in the flesh. So let's go ahead and set that straight. These folks uh, tell you they love the Lord and then try to justify when they sin and cuss you slap out. Glory to God. I had a weak moment. No, you didn't. You was all up in your flesh. You need to be delivered in that area. Lift your hands and give God glory. Come on. You, you got to know that, listen, people will try to justify their foolishness. There is no justification. There is no reason why you should be sinning if you have newness in the life of God. The problem is that we oftentimes yield to what we want to do. Versus the laws of God. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm going to tell them a thing or two. I'm going to lay my Holy Ghost, glory to God. I'm going to lay my Holy Ghost down, down and, and, you know, cuss them, slap out, and then pick it back up again. But that's not God's best for you. That's not God's best for you. That's not God's best for you. God didn't want you to go on an emotional roller coaster. One minute you're up and then the next you're down. One minute you're glorifying. Tell him that he is pre-king and he is Lord and he is savior. And the next, come on, listen, even in your mind, your, your mind problems and issues and not to say that things don't happen. But we sometimes often forget that God's best for us is freedom. 
God's best for us is not bondage. God's best for us for not for us not to be bound by drugs and alcohol and addictions. Come on, uh, listen. You better meditate upon the day of the the, the Lord. Uh, meditate upon His word day and night. That's the only way you're gonna break free from the power of sin. Understand? Listen. There's no reason why you give your life to Christ and you're still living in bondage. So, my dear brothers and sisters. This is the point. You die to the power of the law when you die with Christ, and now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. The only way that you're going to receive God's best, the only way that you're going to live in God's best is to do it God's way, is to do what he tells you to do, is to follow God's laws, to follow God's instructions, to do God's will. But Houston, we have a problem. What happens when we don't do it God's way? Translation is we don't live in God's best. Look at, look at uh, verse number five. When we, are, when we were controlled by the old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law arose these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. What is God trying to tell you this morning? Number verse four says, as a result, we can, pr uh, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. That's, that's how we live in God's best, right? When we live for God. How do we forfeit God's best? Glory to God. Chapter, chapter number five tells us very clearly. When we are controlled by the old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law arose these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. When we're not living and I mean, hallelujah, when we are not seeing the manifestation and fullness of God's best, I want to question uh, you to see whether or not sin is in the camp. Do you remember Achan? Uh, listen, when he tried to hide the very thing that God had said he was to destroy, it is the hidden things that will get us into trouble. Uh, it's the things that you're not willing to, my God, expose. Come on, the hidden things of your heart, the hidden things of your motives. It's the hidden things that will get you caught up every single time. I was reading this text and God told me to tell his people that your sinful nature will also produce a harvest. Your sinful nature will also produce a harvest of death. Living in God and living for God produces a harvest of life. So when you decide to compromise your living for God, when you decide to come on, hallelujah, to not live in accordance with his standards, then something always dies. Glory to God. One of the prevalent killers of marriages is the inability to communicate. But you got to tell yourself, listen, I know this thing is important. It's imperative that we have an understanding of each other, that I communicate my heart's intentions and motives, that, listen, we're going to talk this thing through so that the prince of the power of the air doesn't have a foothold, so that the prince of the power of the air don't come in and draw a wedge of separation in between us. You got to know that the law of God works if we work it. You got to know that the law of God it will get us to a place of liberty and to a place of freedom. But, listen, on the contrary, and it will ca cause us to walk in God's best, on the contrary, when we don't follow the standards of God, when we compromise God's standards and his instructions, then we become, hallelujah, captive to sin, just as in it was with Paul and the Jews. You cannot, you can never, it is insanity. 
to believe that you can walk in God's best and do and live life how you choose and desire to live it. No, God is saying, listen, I've called you to preach, Jonah. You're going to go over there to the Ninevites and you're going to preach salvation unto them. It's not non-negotiable whether you like them. I didn't need your approval before I called you. I put it. I put my power on you. I put my anointing on you. I put the power in your belly so that you may speak a thing, so that you can declare a thing. How dare you, my God, come against me and tell me you're not going to do what I called you to do. I, listen, listen, I, let, let me save you a whole lot of heartache. Let me save you a whole lot of pain. It is when we decide to do life, when we want to do it and how we want to do it, that we forfeit the best things of God. Have you ever got an instruction from God that you didn't necessarily want to hear? I would like to tell you more times than I'm willing to admit. Go over there and get it right. You ain't got to be right. I, you can be right and still be wrong. God rebuked me. Hallelujah. Listen, it was a strong rebuke. But I thank God for correction. Because, listen, if I can correct you, that means that I can mature you. That means you can grow in the things of God. You can stand firmly. You can stand boldly. And you can receive God's best. If God didn't love you, then listen, hallelujah. He would just let you keep doing what you're doing. If God doesn't love you and doesn't care anything about you, he would never discipline you. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. You, in fact, you cannot live in your best unless God brings discipline and correction upon you. Here we go in verse 6, it says, but now we have been released from the law, for we died to it and no longer captive to his power. Now we can serve God not only in the old way of obeying the law, the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. It is my, come on, hallelujah, it is the spirit man that is going to cause you to live in God's best. It will never be your old man. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You will never walk in God's best. You will never receive God's best unless you're willing to submit yourself to the spirit. That's why the old man has to be crucified daily. Crucify your flesh daily. No good thing dwells in the flesh. Come on, when you want to give folk a piece of your mind, uh, as Pastor Jermaine preached, come on, is that the best decision concerning your life? You might have to explain to your spouse or your significant other or to your kids. Listen, you're going to explain it to somebody why y'all can't eat T-bones and glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to face this cute one and say, listen, honey, uh, we have a problem. I decided to make a best, uh, a poor decision that wasn't beneficial for my family. And, and as such, they said, Mr. Wingfield, you can gather your belongings. Uh, your services are no longer needed. I'd rather get rebuked by God than rebuked by my glory to God. What am I saying to you? Your decisions affects other people. Your poor decisions and, e and even your good decisions, uh, my God, will release God's best. Somebody shall prove it, preacher. It was God's decision to come down and lay his life down willingly. And everybody that will believe, come on, oh, hallelujah. How many know that the word of God declares that, my God, he was saved. Everybody that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For one man, come on, glory to God, he punished and brought sin in. It was Adam. But for another man that died, he brought repentance. He brought restoration. He brought, my God, glory. He brought redemption. I'm so glad that God decides to redeem us glory to God mm. well I'm getting ready to preach real good in about two seconds you cannot live in God's best operating in the old system of sin operating in the old system of the instant gratification, the numbing effect of, uh, hallelujah, of, of getting numb and getting drunk and high and uh, listen after you come down you're still going to be depressed after you come on, get your quick high and your quick fix, God is still going to call you to go minister to other people that are bound. And listen, listen, you, you are the greatest testimony of what God can do concerning your life. Why? Because, listen, when he freed you, listen, you are, a, listen, the glory to God. My God. Y'all listen. I'm about to tell the truth and shame the devil. 
I was in the military. And one thing the military taught me how to do is cuss. I can put a compound word together like nobody's business. You know, in the Bible it says that we will create ways to sin. Listen, I, I, listen. If, if, if Urban Dictionary was, was active back then, I probably would have made the headline news. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you this to glorify sin. I'm telling you that when I gave my life to Christ, he literally cleaned me up in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's the power that God can operate when I begin to cry out to him. Hallelujah. Listen, I be, hallelujah. Glory to God. God will change your language when you're operating in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. You can't please God cussing folk out. Out of the same mouth come cursings and blessings. These things shall not be. Come on. Can, don't you know and understand that, listen, when God begins to get a hold of you, God got enough vocabulary to speak to you and to communicate to you in terms where you can get it. And I can assure you, I know I've been walking with him long enough to know that God would never cuss you out and belittle you and tear you down to get a, to convey a point to him. Uh, listen, the fact of the matter is that we know that this is a, a manifested work of the flesh. Now, I just told you that opening this text up, that the dead man, once the Lord calls my wife and I, all bets off, contract over. But I'm still going to petition God. I ain't playing. Lord, just this one time, just for me, glory to God, have all the folk in, uh, uh, in the kingdom hating. Well, why Reggie uh, get to stay with his wife? Glory to God. Yes, Lord. But you got to know and you got to understand, you would never live in God's best when you're operating in your flesh, you will never live in God's best, best operating in the flesh. Number seven, uh, verse seven says, well, then I am suggesting that the law of God is sinful. Well, then am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it was the law that showed me my sin. Mm. Glory to God. It was the law that showed me my sin. It was the law that showed me my sin. People will find excuses and find reasons to blame God for their own sinful nature. If God is so real, then why is he letting all of this calamity happen in my life? And people feel justified, justified by their thought processes. And people are justified uh, by their thinking. Do you not read the word of God that says, just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, so are my thoughts. God doesn't even think on the level that we think on. What makes us believe that we can tell God who created the language, who created heaven and earth, who created human beings, who created the animals, who created the stars and the skies to how can we fix our mouths to tell ourselves that we can even be fit and or justified telling God anything he will respond like he did in the days of Job where were you You wasn't even a twinkling in your father's eye. Where were you uh, when I created all of this? Where were you? And so what, listen, let me tell you something. We are not even qualified to ask God why he does what he does. His ways, my God, uh, listen, the end result is always his best. And let me tell you this. God doesn't need your permission to take you on an alternate route, children of Israel. Hallelujah. God had it. My God, he considered every, my God, the intricate details of their lives to such degree that he understood that fresh out of wilderness, uh, fresh out of bondage, that they were not able to stand against the enemies. But listen, when God showed you that he was who he said he was, when he, my God, after a moment, after he split the Red Sea, then your faith and you can pump your chest out to say, hold on, God swallowed up my enemies. Hold on, and even if that wasn't enough, I will cause bread to fall 
all from heaven. How many know that he is the manna from heaven? How many know that he is the children's bread? Glory to God. God has a track record of showing us that he wants always to release uh, his best concerning us. Listen, how many miracles, how many signs, how many wonders is it going to take before you start believing that God is going to bring you out and he's going to give you authority over your enemies? And how many times is it going to take? Uh, how many comforts, my God, how many confirmations do you need? How many prophetic words do you need that God is going to do the very thing he said he's going to do. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man he have to repent. Hath he said it shall he not do it. Hath he spoken it shall he not make it good. Glory to God. Paul says I would have never even knew that sin existed had it not been for the law. First of all we can blame the laws all the day long. But what is the purpose of the laws to acknowledge your sin and what God is saying to you today? Had I not put my laws, my God, concerning the 66 books of the Bible, you would have an excuse as to and justification as to why you continue to sin day after day after day. But God is saying, listen, had I not written my laws, you would have been completely oblivious to sin. So what are you telling me, preacher? God's law will always hold sin accountable. Hmm. Let me tell you this again. God's laws will always hold sin accountable. People who freely sin have little to no accountability. Oh, it's quiet in this sanctified church. Y'all are listening intently. And I wanted you to get this down in your spirit. That if God's laws, come on, hallelujah, are not in place, it literally gives you a free for all. And my God, to do whatever you decide what is right in your own eyes. But God is saying, come on, that's why he had to give the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not. Listen, come on, what is God saying to you? Your behavior, your attitude, and your conversations are unacceptable thou shalt not come on hallelujah recompense no evil for evil but you got to understand when God's laws come in he will hold you accountable by his laws glory to God Paul said but sin used to this command to arouse all kinds of of covetous desires within me. If there were no law, sin would not have that power. Glory to God. If there was no law, sin would not have that power. Back in the days, they didn't even have laws written in the books. They did what they called moral laws, things that people intuitively, instinctively knew that they were good. Hallelujah. There were community laws that said, listen, uh, it's uh, unacceptable to steal your neighbor's property. It's unacceptable. It's called the moral law. God has created you and God has equipped you with moral faculties to understand right from wrong. That's why God gets so upset with his people. Listen, the people who know the law, the people who understand the law, understands that there should be grace and there should be, come on, there should be some type of kindness and love and restoration. But people who understand the law, uh, listen, people who do wrong, they already know 10 times out of 10 that they're doing the wrong. But oh, religious Christian folk who can walk with God, they can move the very mountains. I get all super deep with God. I can pray with the best of them. I can, my God, pray because I'm in a company of people. Hallelujah. I tell you a truth. You have your reward. Don't think for one minute that God is not watching everything. Come on. Hallelujah. That you're doing. And in fact, when you have an office, in fact, when you're in leadership, God will, my God, require a greater level of responsibility. How many glory to God? Stop prove it, preacher. God told Moses to speak to the rock. And he struck the rock. 
And as a result, he could not enter into the land of promise. Leaders, come on, listen, you want to call yourself a prophet? You want to call yourself an apostle? You want to call yourself a leader in God's church? Come on, hallelujah, mess around and do one thing wrong. God will hit your finances and call you, oh, that's him, I, oh, Lord Jesus. Listen, I guarantee you, listen, my God, glory to God. You got to know and understand that you can't live in God's best, giving folk a piece of your mind. Your best is always a direct result of living according to the standards of God period, end of discussion. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I'm about to wrap it up, y'all. Uh, the Bible says, at one time I lived without understanding the law, but when I learned the command not to covet, for instance, the power of sin came to, came to life. You can glory to God. Hallelujah. When you, my God, begin to subject yourselves, the more you subject yourself to God's law, the more that the wrongdoing and sin should be prevalent in your life. Because, listen, God's faculties still should convict us. The way the Holy Ghost is set up, you can't do whatever you want to do. You can't say what you want to say. Hallelujah. You can't, my God, hallelujah, post whatever you want to post. It's not a free for all and tear down somebody. How can God get the glory? You can be right and still be wrong. You can be absolutely 100% accurate and still not bring God's name glory. Well, what do you mean, preacher? It was the attitude behind the post. Uh, it was the heart posture. Uh, my God, behind the post. Uh, my God, you got to know and understand that you have God's laws. And once you have God's laws, there is a greater level of responsibility that God will require of you. Paul understood this level of accountability. He said, at one time I lived without understanding the law. I got an excuse. I know in the world and in the main time, my God, hallelujah, uh, in the natural, we say that, my God, no excuse, the, uh, you know, uh, glory to God. Ignorance of the law is no excuse of the law. But I believe, come on, the way that the law is signed, the way that the laws are set up in the natural. They don't have to give you grace. You're at the mercy of the judge. You're at the mercy of the prosecutor. You're at the mercy of your, of your my God, your, your, your solicitor or your lawyer. Uh, my God, ability to, to give you an outlet or give you an alibi, freeing you from the charge. Come on. But I want to tell you, but the laws of God are full of grace. The laws of God by virtue and nature of who he is. That's why he says if your enemies are hungry, hallelujah, don't let them starve and get my God. God let me, Lord, yes, let me go and dip down into this real quick. Sometimes when your enemy offends you, you take sick pleasure. My God, when you think that you have arrived and you can make it and now that you can do what you want to do, look at you now. Uh, listen, you ain't got to say nothing with your mouth, but your heart, my God, your heart posture is not a right. The, the Bible is clear when it says if your enemies are hungry, feed them. It didn't say tear them down. It didn't say ridicule them. It didn't say judge them. Come on, you got to know, listen, your heart posture will, call, will prevent you from living in God's best. Hallelujah. If he's thirsty, feed him. That's exactly what God did with you and I. So the next time we want to be arrogant, the next time we want to be prideful, yet while I was a sinner, when I was out there a chief sinner, as Paul said, I was a first class sinner. And Christ, I didn't ask him to die. He did it and he laid down his life willingly. Come on, God, should we not have mercy? Just like God had mercy towards us, the Bible declares, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Ooh, somebody know the word. They shall obtain mercy. It's interesting to me that, my God, some of the most critical folk, hallelujah, some of the most judgmental folk, hallelujah, they want mercy to come to them, but are unwilling to release mercy. That's not in alignment with the laws of God. That's not in alignment with the plans of God. That's not in alignment with the standards of God. In fact, the word of God declares, blessed are the merciful. 
In other words, in order to receive mercy, you must be willing to give mercy. You must be willing to release mercy. Hallelujah. Stop judging folk. Stop being, my God, critical, overly critical. Now, I'm not saying don't hold folk accountable as it relates to the word. Let me, let me give some balance to this text. The Bible says that if you try to go to a brother, hallelujah, and they don't, they don't receive you, take with you a witness. It's a way to do things decently and in order. God didn't say go on social media and go on a rampage and tear folk down. Hallelujah. You're saying everything but the person's name. People and everybody with any ounce of discernment know exactly who you're talking about. I can assure you that's not in God's best interest. I can assure you that's not the best decision for your life. Because you're, huh, glory to God. You reap what you sow. When you sow, hallelujah, seeds of discord, you will reap calamity and discord you got to know that God's law come on is not subject come on you're not excluded I'm not excluded listen if I say something crazy if I do something crazy glory to God uh, I'm subject to God's laws and check this out the only way that a law can hold you accountable is if you transgress said law a police officer has no authority over you and cannot exercise his powers of arrest unless a law was broken. Likewise, Christ, Jesus, the Christ, hallelujah. Come on, he can't hold us in contempt of his laws until we break the law. Hallelujah. We cannot be subject to the laws and the punishments of God until we break the laws. And you got to know, come on, hallelujah. It's not God's best for us to transgress his law. In fact, remember what Paul said. I would have not even understood that law, my God, hallelujah, that sin and covenant would have even been, in the, been a thing unless it said it in the law. You have a duty. You have a purpose. And you have a mandate, my God, that once you get God's laws on the inside of your heart, you must come out of my God fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness glory to God shall I sin that grace may abound let me finish this thing up hallelujah glory to God verse 21 I've discovered the, this principle of life that when I want to do what is good, what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. Glory be unto God. One of the greatest things and the first things that the enemy will attack is your mind and your thought process. Uh, that's why the Bible says meditate upon the word day and night. It didn't say meditating on slapping somebody. It ain't say meditating on cussing somebody out. It ain't say meditating on tearing folk down. Come on, hallelujah. And you call yourself a Christian and you wonder why folk don't want to come to your church. Uh, listen, your mean and devilish and nasty attitude. I wouldn't want to come to my God to your pool party. You can offer me a million dollars. Thank you, but no thank you. Glory to God. Paul concludes that I've discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin. That is still within me. If you're constantly subjecting yourself to sin, According to the word of God, there's something that's still on the inside of you that is calling you to sin. There is something within me that is at war with my mind. People who are in deep in, in, in level, glory, hallelujah. When you are deep into sin, people who are sinful are all over the place mentally. You trust your diagnosis of your doctor. 
but you fail to believe and trust the diagnosis of the great physician. You tell the doctor who has a PhD or MD, whatever D, come up, put 500 letters behind their name. But I understand a power that is not subject to natural laws. It's called the spirit of the, come on, the, come on, not the letter of the law, but the spirit of God's laws says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The spirit of God's laws and the spirit of God's commandments says that God can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. That means, come on, hallelujah. Mental health problems are no match for God. That means, come on, glory to God. God. High physical ailments, ailments is no match for God. Sickness is no match for God. Manner of disease is no match for God. Is there anything that is too hard for my God? I love God's law with all my heart. But you got to recognize that there is another law. The law of your mind that, my God, the devil that would literally torment you to such degree that you can't even meditate upon what God's word is. Hallelujah. That's how the enemy tries to trap you. He that controls the head controls the entire body. I want to teach you this morning that God's best would never be received in our own accord within our own faculties. No good thing dwells in this flesh, but it is by the power of God that I'm going to be, my God, successful over this thing called sin. Verse 24 says, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Paul, my God, listen, in order to receive God's best, you got to come into awareness that you're not good enough. That, my God, that you're filthy. You are, my God, that your righteousness is as filthy rags. Paul, my God, what made him say, oh, wretched man that I am? And if you're going to live in God's best, you got to acknowledge that you are not capable of living in the fullness of what God has called you to do when you're trying to do it on your own accord, when you're trying to do it within your own strength, when you're trying to do it within your own power, when you're trying to do it within your own might, it is by the spirit of God that I can be free. Oh, what wretched man that I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? In other words, how can I live my best life? I can assure you that it's not through smoking weed. I can assure, I don't care how many, how many states legalize marijuana any mind altering substances and now folk will argue and go back and forth with you and listen we have our own ideologies right and thought anything that is designed to alter your mind how can God be a part of that thing listen to what I'm saying it doesn't make sense to what I'm saying but you got to know that listen hallelujah in order to walk and receive the fullness of God he is the one that can, can deliver you from everything he is the one that says listen all things are possible to those that believe only believe You've put, listen, come on, the woman that had the issue of blood put her faith in all the doctors. The doctors could not help her. But when she went to Jesus, glory to God, she began to receive her best health. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm telling you that you've tried many of things, that you've tried many of people, that you've tried many of remedies, but you will never live. Come on, your best until you touch. My God, God in a deep place. And the Bible says that when she touched her, Hallelujah. The Bible says that virtue left from him. Come on, glory to God. God has more than enough to give you everything that you need to live in your best life, to live in your best peace, to live in your best joy. I'm talking joy unspeakable. All you got to do is touch him one good time. Touch him in a deep place. Glory to God. Thank God. Here's the, here's the answer. After all of that, he says, Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's laws. But because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. Maybe there's someone watching. Or maybe there's someone in this room that have found themselves subject, hallelujah, subject to always sinning always violating the laws of God.
always doing those things that are not pleasing in his sight. And I'm telling you, listen, that is not God's best for you. I'm telling you, the best thing that you can do is to say, God, I need your help. It's to say, Jesus, Lord, I need your help. Because it is only through the power of God that you will live your best life. Come on, hallelujah. And I see mental torment. And I see, come on, the devil has been wreaking havoc amongst God's people. They've, my God, given their lives to Christ. And they've said, Lord, I want to live for you. But just as you, maybe, come on, you felt like Paul would. Hallelujah. Listen, when I would do good, that evil is always around me. I can't catch a break. Glory to God. Whew. I'm telling you today that Paul's conclusion of the matter Hallelujah. Listen, I told you that he said, listen, he said, I can never get and receive God's best if I'm living according to my own standards and, and, and according to this thing called my flesh. But here's the conclusion. Uh, even when my mind is tormented, even when I, my God, the Bible says in the King James Version, version, glory to God, that he says, listen, my members are at war. Hallelujah. Listen, that sin is in my members and my mind is being tormented. But here is the conclusion of the matter that Jesus the Christ he is the answer hallelujah the Bible says thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord so you know so you see how it is in my mind I really want to obey God's law but because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. And I want to encourage God's people this day. I want to encourage God's people in this hour that you have to make a conscious choice, that you have to make a conscious decision. After you've looked and reflected and evaluated your life, why do I keep going around and around the mulberry bush as the old folk would say why do I keep my God hallelujah why cannot get breakthrough in this specific area of my life hallelujah listen why is it God is it that I don't trust you God is it that the my my God listen that, that, that my, my 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 oh glory to God mm. is it because I've convinced myself that I've been dealing with this situation for so long that there is no help for me. I'm telling you this day, I'm telling you in this hour, that the devil, he is a liar, that God wants you to receive his best. And you gotta be like Paul. Hallelujah, listen, even when I have mental tormenting issues, even when my thoughts are off, even when things are not in alignment in the earth, I wanna say to you this day and even in this hour, that God, I'm not living according to your best, according to your word. Hallelujah, listen, but my answer is in Christ Jesus. Maybe somebody has been trying to do it all on their own. That they're sought to, my God, to fill the voice of God with substances. To fill the voice of God with what they think and what they feel. Let me save you some trouble that you will never walk in your best when you've already got all the answers. But I want to encourage you who does have all the answers. Jesus, our Lord. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviors. He is the answer. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. My God, he is the end. Listen, all you got to do is come to him. This is the thing that Paul concluded. Jesus Christ, my God, listen, through all of the things that I've endured, through all of my mental struggles, I thought that I had this thing called sin under wraps and under control. But my, hallelujah, the more I begin to understand God's laws, the more I can say hallelujah. As I obey God's laws, I begin to be released from my sin I begin to re be released from my calamity and I want to walk in God's best the devil has lied to so many people to say to them that they don't need God that you've been doing a fine job well if what you've been doing is working thus far why is it then that your peace is stripped away from you? 
if what you're doing is so effective, why is it that you have no joy? If what you were doing was so effective, why is it that you can't even sleep? You toss and turn and you can't even rest. Come on, but I declare this day that God is saying, I want to release my best upon my people. Will you come to me? Will you give it to me, saith God? Hallelujah. I want to release my best. Why? Because, listen, for I know the plans I have for you, saith God. Oh, glory to God. God's plans always includes hope and a future. And my God, listen, and I see brick walls in the realm of the spirit. My God, the thing that you're doing and the thing that you're even thinking about doing, it's going to only end in calamity. But I'm telling you that when you make it up in your mind that I'm going to follow God's laws, I'm going to then reap God's best. Don't you know that this is his season of best? But only the only requirement is God is saying, will you obey me? Will you stop my God? Let the drugs go. Will you obey me and say hallelujah? Stop trying to do it on your own way. Stop trying to do it in your own accord. And God is saying to you, do you really want my best? The answer is simple. This altar is open. The answer is simple. The thing that has taken that you've allowed to take God's place has literally robbed your best and God is saying now is the time now is the moment that I take my rightful place that I restore your peace again that I restore your joy again that I restore everything that is concerning you again hallelujah God is saying I want to release my best but your members have been warring against you. Your mind has been warring against you. Hallelujah. Listen, your circumstances have been warring against you. And God is saying now. Lord, I stand in covenant agreement with your best concerning your people. Come on, come on, hallelujah. Who is in need of God's best? This altar is open. Who is in need of God's best? This altar is open. The biggest lie that the enemy will ever tell you that you have all the answers, that you have it all together, that you can do it in your own strength. Paul said on the quite on the contrary, I, I my God, I've recompensed in my mind that there is a law of sin. There is a law against my mind and they were warring in my members. I can't do my God or nor am I even worthy to receive God's best. But listen, what makes me worthy is to say, God, I can't do it anymore. What are you in need of? What are you in need of? What is the thing that my God that calls you to be like Paul? Keep going around and around and around. My God, God is saying, give it over to me. What is robbing you of your joy? God is saying, give it over to me, son. God is saying, give it over to me, daughter. Hallelujah. I want to release my best concerning you. God. If you need prayer, this altar is open. If you've watched loved ones struggle and they've not walked in God's best, this altar is open. I want to encourage you to stand in the gap for those who not even, my God, not even cognitively aware that somebody needs to stand in their place. That somebody, come on, as it was with the centurion man, that I'm going to go on behalf of another. That Lord leads and hallelujah. Listen, I'm not even worthy for you to come into my house, but speak thy word only. That my servant is healed. Speak thy word only. That my mind is free. Speak thy word only. That I'm free. That whom the Son has set free is truly free indeed. Don't allow guilt. Don't allow shame to stop you from doing what you know in your heart is the right thing to do. Hallelujah. Come. If you are in need of prayer, we want to pray with you. We want to stand with you. We want to agree with you that the power of agreement may be released in your life, that the power of agreement may be released over you. Hallelujah. Listen.
Aleluya. God wants you to receive his best. Since he died, we can live in newness of life. Since he died, we are no longer subject to the old man, but we will walk in the power and demonstration of the spirit man.
stand. God is amazing. God is truly amazing. Listen, we want to thank you guys for joining us. We want to thank you guys for joining us this morning. You could have been anywhere else, but you said, listen, I want to be in the house of the Lord. I want to be in a place where the love, the faith, and the worship is contagious. And we are truly grateful for each and every one of you. I want you to be encouraged and know that God is with you. God is leading you. God is guiding you. And God is walking with you. Amen. Let's be encouraged as we leave this place. Let's never depart. Never depart from his presence. But be encouraged that God will forever be with his people. We are excited about what's happening in Contagious Church as a whole. Uh, great things are coming, so I want everybody to just be on notice and be on alert that great things are coming. The weather is starting to get really beautiful, so we're going to be starting to do some things. So I, I know I say it every Sunday, but trust and believe that we have some stuff in the works that we need you to be a part of. So as it continues to warm up, we'll go ahead and release those things from the altar. We want to get people, as many people as we can, to just impact and infect this world with, with love, faith, and worship. So we need all of you. We need all the boots on the ground. Amen? Amen. Amen. You, I love you guys. You guys are so amazing. If nobody ever told you that, you guys are amazing, according to Apostle Reggie. You are amazing. So let us pray. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and a wonderful Sunday. But let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you for another time to spend in your presence, God. We thank you that we didn't just come here, God, looking for you. God. We thank you that you were here before we even got here, Father God. We thank you that we had another opportunity, God, to spend time in your presence, God. We thank you for even for the preach word, Father God, that went forth, God. Let us cleave to the meat of that word, even the milk, Father God, for the babes, God. I pray even now that it would change our lives from this day forward, God that we will have a new perspective on life, that we will have a new perspective on faith, Father God, that we will have a new outlook, God, and a new worldview, God, on how we view who you are, God. I thank you even now, God, that you have gone before us and made every crooked path straight. You have made every broad path narrow, Father God. So we believe that we will never depart from your presence, even leaving this place, Lord. I pray even now over each and every individual in this room, let your angels be encamped about them, keep them safe from all hurt, all harm, and all danger, Father God, as they travel to and from Father God and let them always be reminded that you are with them. Now we pray God now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling. Make us stand in the glory of his presence blameless with great joy be glory, honor, dominion, power majesty, might before time now and forevermore. It is in the mighty, the marvelous and the matchless name of Jesus Christ we all pray and say amen. Amen. Say I will make the love the faith and the worship of God contagious. On the count of three, we are contagious real big. Say one, two, three. You all be blessed. Have an amazing Sunday. We love you.